Hello, good morning. It's day one of Watches and Wonders 2024, where so many brands unveil their novelties for the year. And of course, it is one of the most exciting times in the Watch Geek calendar. I'm going to be making quite a few videos this week. I've already got a Nomos one out if you want to go check that out. But let's talk about Rolex. What's new, what's discontinued, and some of my thoughts. Let's start out with what's new, what's changed, and you know, I'm going to say something that I don't usually say about Rolex. I found this year's releases disappointing and boring. There's nothing I'm going to be racing out to the authorized dealer to buy. It brings me no joy to say this, but it kind of feels like a bit of a filler year. First, let's talk about the Rolex GMT gray black bezel, stainless steel on Oyster and Jubilee. So we all knew something new would be happening in the GMT department, and I know this was a theory that was floating about. So last year Rolex unveiled the GMT Master 2, two-tone on Jubilee, and the full yellow gold on Jubilee with the grey black bezel. And I think this looks absolutely fantastic on the stainless steel, a little bit more subdued, and it might be perfect for people who are missing that full black bezel GMT, which was discontinued in 2018. I really thought there would be more from the GMT. I was fully aboard the Coke is coming back hype train. Although, Tudor, Black Bay 58 GMT. But with the Rolex, there's nothing new. There's no movement upgrade. It's just that gray black bezel being added to stainless steel. I thought this year was an anniversary year, but if you scroll to the bottom of the new GMT page, it states that 1955 was the launch of the GMT Master. So maybe next year is when we are going to see the biggest updates. Next bit of exciting news, the 1908 is now available in 950 Platinum with an ice blue dial. After the Rolex teaser from a few days ago, I don't think anyone is surprised by this, but this looks fantastic. So this has a decorated rice grain motif dial. But for me, the big news is the use of platinum. I don't think anyone had a platinum 1908 on their bingo cards, maybe a platinum sub. So, but this honestly looks great. I really love the brown strap pairing and the green interior of the strap. I really, really wanna see one of these in person. I personally couldn't see myself buying a dress watch from Rolex. But honestly, the price is kinda okay on these. A platinum dress watch for 26,600 pounds is actually kinda well priced. Moving on, we have a very diamond set, Cosmograph Daytona being added to the mix. There's a few new models being added, all with a diamond bezel. So we've got a diamond and white mother of pearl set on white gold on the bracelet and on the Oyster Flex for prices you'd kind of expect. But then we get to the big daddy, 100,000 pound Daytona, white gold, diamonds everywhere. <laughs> diamonds on the bezel, diamonds on the lugs, diamonds on the indices. Like, it's a lot. But would you guys judge me if I didn't totally, completely not hate it? I mean, if I had a hundred thousand pounds to spend on a watch, I still wouldn't get this, <laughs> but, but I feel like I don't hate it as much as other people will. Next one is another one I think looks great, but I'd never buy it. It's a total monster. So this is the 18 karat yellow gold deep sea. And this is an absolute beast. This is a weapons grade beast. I don't know if you remember from the teaser, there was a yellow gold watch with a different color case back and this is it. So titanium case back, titanium helium escape valve. This is a 44 millimeter tank retailing for 45,700 pounds. Ouch. And lastly, we need to talk about the new day date variations. So we've got the day date 40 ever rose gold with the slate ombre dial. So it is a sunburst with just that little bit more gradation in the dial. A new day date 40 with mother of pearl, a day date 36 with a white lacquer dial and baton hour markers mixed with Roman numerals. And a day date 36 that I know will be underrated because it's an expensive precious metal model with a diamond bezel, but a day date with a blue green dial. I love the ever rose gold. I don't love the diamonds, but I freaking love that dial color. If it didn't have the diamonds, and if I happened upon 30,000 pounds, I would seriously consider this. Now I would love to share about what's been discontinued, but the Rolex website isn't working. As of the time of filming, if you hit configure, it just never loads. 
So I had to do some creative Googling because I'm an internet person so I can do that. And we got there. So as far as I can tell right now from what I've been able to find with the website not working, the ones we suspected and kind of knew would be gone are gone. So the palm dial motif is gone. And very sadly, the fluted dial motif is gone. I thought this was such a good looking watch. Very disappointing. The Celebration Oyster Perpetual is still here, bebe. So that means I've got a whole nother year of begging my authorized dealer and then politely saying, yeah, you're next on the list. <laughs> Pray for me. It's been really hard navigating their website though. I'm not sure if this is something that they've done intentionally to cut off watch nerds like me who are just refreshing things at home. If they do, if they are doing that, that's, that's really sad. That's a sad day for the enthusiast community. But maybe the website just is down. I'd imagine there's tons of people trying to access it all at the same time. If there's any big news I missed on the discontinued front, best believe I will be back <laughs> with another video update. I really thought this was going to be such a big exciting year for Rolex and it's ended up being kind of disappointing. There's nothing I'm super excited for. There's nothing I'm going to be racing out to my authorized dealer to go buy. It's all just been a bit meh. I feel like this has been a bit of a filler year for them and I'm hoping next year we see more exciting stuff. For me, Tudor has been the big freaking news and I'm going to be filming a video about them right now because I'm so much more excited when I go on their website. Also, Nomos was a million times more exciting as well. It's their first year at Watches and Wonders and they freaking delivered with a bang. Cannot recommend enough going to look into their pieces. But anyways, guys, these are just some of my thoughts. I'd love to know yours in those comments down below. Were you as disappointed as me? I'd love to know, let me know. Um, and if there's any big discontinued pieces that you're surprised by, let me know. We'll see you later with more Watches and Wonders news. Now is the point of the video where I always thank the Pope tier patrons. Thank you all tier patrons. You keep the lights on here at Gringa H Cru HQ, but big special huge thank you to the Pope tier patrons. I'm sorry you guys didn't get early access uh, to Watches and Wonders videos. One, because some of it was just under embargo, like the Nomos videos. And two, you just gotta get these out fast, baby! But I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my weird little channel. And I hope you keep enjoying the work I'm doing here. I love watches and I'm so glad to know more fabulous watch geeks like you. Okay, bye guys.